Hello, everyone, and welcome to Top of Mind. I'm Barry Masalio, and I want to talk to you today about two aspects of the human to machine relationship that most people are overlooking. We're in the throes of doing a bunch of research right now that hasn't been published yet, uh, it's still early stages, on what human re machine relationships will look like and what healthy and unhealthy ones are. But I want to talk to you about two. They're kind of technical terms. I don't usually do this on top of mind, but I'm going to throw two technical terms at you because I think they're useful. If you're out there deciding how you're going to create or designing some kind of solution with technology, especially with AI, but not limited to it, then these will matter. Okay. And the two characteristics are digital disinhibition and algorithmic aversion. And they're kind of on two opposite sides of a spectrum of relationship characteristics and possibilities. Let's start with the first one, digital disinhibition. So digital disinhibition is a situation where someone, a human, feels more comfortable telling their deepest, darkest truths to a machine than to a human. And the place you see this most is in the area of mental health. You may or may not be aware that there's a lot of mental health uh, therapy bots and AI chat bots, some of which are generative, some of which aren't, that are out there trying to fill the gap between um, the need for mental health assistance and actual human therapists that don't necessarily, uh, they're not in every geography and not in every place and not available to everybody who needs them. And so there's this increasing market around digital or um, AI powered therapy bots that are there to help people. And what we find is with certain cohorts of people, many times teenagers, you get uh, this digital disinhibition effect, which is they feel more comfortable talking about things that are difficult for them, their deepest, darkest truths, when they're talking to a machine than when they're talking to a human. You also see the, the bad side of this on social media and other channels where people are very uninhibited, um, mostly because of the anonymity associated with what they're saying, not so much because they're uninhibited because the channel is digital, but that too feels very distant. It feels very impersonal. It feels like you can say whatever. But on the, on the positive side, what this means is that lots of people who need therapy are much more able to get it, A, because of the accessibility and the ubiquity of the the, the chatbot, so it's available at 2 a.m. if you're having a tough time, but B, because they have a much more fruitful conversation than, say, I don't know, a 16-year-old might have with some 55-year-old therapist that they think, how can you possibly understand my reality? You're just old and dried up, and you could never know what it's like to be me, etc. So digital disinhibition is one design characteristic that uh, a lot of people don't know enough about and we think should be researched a little bit more for anybody out there struggling to design the right kind of relationship between whatever their AI solution is or whatever their technology solution is and the users, be they citizens, employees, or customers that are going to interact with it. The other characteristic here that's specific to human machine relationships is this thing called algorithmic aversion that I mentioned in the introduction. Algorithmic aversion is a situation where one of two things happens. Either we hold the machine to a different set of standards than we hold to the human doing the same task, or we just outright don't believe the answer of the machine, even when it's correct. Okay. So I'll tell you, algorithmic aversion doesn't occur for me when I'm looking at the answer to an equation on my calculator. You know, like I don't look at my calculator and go, I don't believe that answer. If something's wrong with the answer, I think I made a mistake, not the calculator, because I find it really dependable. I have lots of experience with it, and I know the answer's right. But where you get algorithmic aversion is when it's something new, a new piece of information coming from the machine or a new task that it's doing that humans aren't used to it doing, and they have an adverse reaction to it. So in the first case, right, I'm going to hold the machine to a different standard than I'm going to hold the human. The classic example here is autonomous driving. So autonomous driving cars where any uh, mess up that the autonomous car does is immediately headline news, right? Whereas we have bad drivers, human drivers that are doing all sorts of errors and, and killing pedestrians and things like that almost every day. And so I'm not being an apologist for autonomous vehicles in any way. I'm simply saying this is one of those areas where this manifests, right? The machine cannot screw up ever, even though the, machine, even though the human does. We have different standards for them. So that's one aspect of algorithmic aversion. The other aspect is when we just outright don't believe it. We don't believe what the, what the human says, what the machine says. And I'm not talking here about hallucinations necessarily. I'll give you an example. There was a hospital setting 
where it was really expensive to have patients occupying beds that were needed in the emergency unit um, and occupying them just in case they had a heart attack and finding out they didn't have a heart attack and then sending them home and we didn't get to use that bed for someone else. And so the uh, engineers, there was a group of engineers and designers at the hospital that thought, what if we used technology to try and analyze big, huge data sets and determine what critical criteria are more likely to predict someone having a heart attack very soon versus someone who's not going to, even if they look like they might. And so they came back, this AI powered engine did all this analysis of this huge data set. And it came back with, I think, four criteria for if you see these four criteria, that patient is very high risk of having a heart attack very soon. So don't send them home. So this happened to be accurate, right? It turned out to be accurate. They tested it. It was right. Uh, and the engineers or the solution designers were super excited to show this to the cardiologist, the human cardiologist, the doctors, and saying, look at this, it's fabulous. Don't you love it? And the cardiologist had a totally adverse reaction. Why? Why? There's this hugely um, powerful engine that's helping them do their jobs, getting more accurate um, information, sending home patients that don't need to be in the hospital, keeping in patients that do. It all sounds wonderful, except for algorithmic aversion. These cardiologists had an adverse reaction because they went, first of all, it's not just four things. Like, I didn't study 13 years and specialize in cardiology and do really hard things at university for it to come down to four things that a machine can just figure out, right? It's much more complex than that. It's much more difficult. And all of my years of experience are what are really required to know, right? That was the first thing. And the second thing was... Um, um, I just don't believe the data. I don't want it to be true because that's a threat to my status, right? And so this is how algorithmic aversion can show up in a human to machine relationship, even when the machine is right. So I don't say these uh, these two characteristics, digital disinhibition and algorithmic aversion, to say, you know, you were going to run into this every time or here's my set of advice. I just say it to try and open up the discussion around human to machine relationships and to bear in mind that there are aspects of that relationship that are unique to machines where humans have a different reaction than they would to other humans. And so it's useful for anyone out there struggling with design or trying to do something different for them to bear this in mind. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.